<laughs> Sorry, I forgot I had it on. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Thank you for uh, joining me again for another Hangout on Social Happy Hour with Peter. I'm one of your hosts, uh, Peter Madrigal. But then again, you already know that. <clears throat> Excuse me while I take a, a sip. Mm. Mm. Before I get started tonight, I just want to thank Fresh Vine Wine for coming in big for me. I'm drinking a Fresh Vine Wine Cabernet. So this is like non-existent sugar, very, very low carbs. It is something that you want to drink if you want to stay uh, fit and healthy and keep on running around. Anyway, mm. cheers, everybody. I hope you're having a safe and awesome Thursday evening tonight. Um, before I get started with the Reverend Schnorr, because that's who everyone wants to see tonight, uh, you know, from Jerry Springer. I know you guys want to talk to him. I know you guys want to see him. I know you want to hear what he has to say. Before I get started with that, please subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell, because, of course, as everyone knows, if you pay attention to the show, last week I was not on at all. So to find out if I'm on, you might want to subscribe and then hit that bell because this show is live. We are live every single Tuesday and Thursday, sometimes a Wednesday, which is hump day. But uh, but yeah, it, we're live whenever we do this show. So hit that notification bell so you can find out whether I'm on or not. You, you, know, you forget about little old me sometimes, right? Yeah, I, I, I forget about little old me sometimes. So hit the notification bell. And while I'm at it, a little bit of housekeeping after that piece of housekeeping, we have my candles. You got to check them out. It's AM by PM and PM by PM. All right. You can find these and make your place smell like me on Peterific merch, peterific-merch.com. And yeah, have your place smelling like me, smell like me during the day, smell like me at night, and you'll be all right. And then, of course, as always, I always got to bring up the hair, guys, because, uh, you know, everybody, you got to have fabulous hair. So, <clears throat> and when you have long hair, you got to show it off. So, go to myharrow.com, pick yourself up a little bit of tonic, which is the number three, because, you know, if you're not getting lucky, this will give you the effect of getting lucky the night before. So you can tell everybody, hey, I got lucky just from you know showing it off. When you spray this into your hair, you look like you had an, uh, a long night the night before. So you know, go, go get yourself uh, set up with that. And then of course, last but not least, go check out the new and one of a kind slot machine app that you can download and play. It's called Celebrity Slots. I actually have a game going on right now. And uh, I just won some stuff. Okay, all right. Boom, baby. Yeah. So go check that out. You can win real world prizes like, of course, some of my candles. Why not? Go check that out. Go win yourself some some really cool merchandise. Maybe go and uh, win some from, you know, Jomas Gorga. You don't have to take all my stuff, all right? You can go and win some of their stuff. So go do that. <laughs> anyway, now, <clears throat> whew, after all that housekeeping... I'm going to go ahead and bring in Johnny right now because we have a serious conversation coming on. 
We got something serious coming on. So, Johnny, what do we have tonight? As I as I redo my hair, because I don't really have a monologue for this. <clears throat> I can tell. I was waiting to hear like a big monologue from you, and you just kind of cut it nice and I short. I don't have a monologue for this one. This is this deserves its own introduction. I okay. love it. This it's is, perfect. This exactly. deserves its own like. It's, just, a, it's actually great. It's beautiful. It's great. It's beautiful. It's exactly the way it should be. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. the way it should be. But anyway, uh, what's happening, buddy? <laughs> oh, not much, man. Just sitting back, drinking some wine, and I'm ready for a nice little conversation. Now, what are you drinking tonight, Johnny? I'm drinking, I'm having a little Boy George. Oh, Boy George. What is that? Casamigos. 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 Oh, my well, well, cheers to that. Well, Boom. Well, Love it. Uh, George Clooney. Are you going to drink straight out of the bottle? Uh, I might in a little while. You know, on Tuesday, I was a little saucy. No, Peter and, and I, Peter Love, I remember that. And that, that was a fun time. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I got myself a little cayenne pepper, and I'm ready. And uh, I'm having, like, just a little nice little drink here, a little cocktail for Thursday night, Thirsty Thursday. Yeah. With, with Peter Magical. And uh, going to have some fun tonight. Cheers. There we go. Cheers, baby. Oh. Now. The reason why I didn't have a um, a monologue for this one, you sound because, like, before, before you do, you sound like a nice little announcer there, where, you, where you're going, you're back and forth going about, oh, we got a little housekeeping. I got oh yeah, merch. I got myhero.com. I got celebrity slots. How celebrity slots doing, by the way? Oh, celebrity slots. We are kicking ass on celebrity slots. Let me. Tell you, you were just in Vegas. You were just in Vegas for a meeting with that, weren't you? Or yes. was it a different meeting? The meeting was for, was for something else. Another TV show that I got lined up, which is uh, kind of yeah. on the DL right now. But you'll you'll find out very very yeah. soon, very very quickly. Exactly. Yeah. But as far as celebrity slots goes, I mean, it's just like I was saying earlier. You can play against me, and you can take more of my candles. I got to get more candles to give away. All right. I just you know I'm just putting it out there because people love my candles. So I got I'm actually in the process of getting more. That being said, go play against someone else because I'm tired of my stuff being taken away from me. Because everyone's winning all the time. Jeez, I got to find other stuff to give away. <laughs> I, I I need a candle. I, I need. A, I don't even have a candle. I got. Oh, I'll tell you what. I know you where to buy my game for that, buddy. <laughs> I, I know where to buy it, so I'll buy a candle. Okay, you sure? Because I can send you one. Oh, look who's in the house. Some Reverend Schnorr fans, Nelson Toe. Oh my Ooh. goodness! Look at that. We got some. We got some Rev Schnorr people coming in the house. Rev. And uh, Brother Carlito. Reverend Brother Carlito. Now, before we get to them, yep, the yep. reason I didn't want to do a monologue today is because you <clears throat> used to – well, why don't you tell everybody what you used to do for Jerry's? Oh, for the for, for Jerry's yeah. show? So, so yeah, I, I used to be stage manager, post-production supervisor, worked there 10 years. Crazy. Everybody heard the story before. And uh, – Well, refresher. Why not? Yeah, I, I, well, we can get into it when we got some of the guys on and, and, okay. and do that. But, but, uh, but yeah, I used to work for the guy, and he's the best. He's the best ever. Started off my career in my twenties. What, what better way to, you know, grow up in your twenties as part of the worst show in the history of television? Wink, wink. You know, and, but that's uh, funny because I, I put a story out today and all of a sudden everyone was like, some people were telling me like, oh, so ghetto. And I'm just like, okay, you don't have to be like that. Just put something out. You know, that was like the only, those yeah, are the yeah. only co the comments that I got. I was like, okay, I'm not bringing that on. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, it, yeah, it, it, it was, it, listen, man, it was great times. We had a lot of, a lot of fun times growing up on that show. And, yeah. uh, and and running the show as guys in their, you know, mid twenties and early thirties, um, really taking it by the helm and, and, and uh, and contributing what the show was in that era of time. So uh, we had a great time. Some of the guys that, you know, I call my best friends are, uh, are coming on today in the green room here. And uh, yeah, we had an amazing time with it. And <laughs> a lot of stories, a lot of stories we're not gonna tell. And uh, a lot of stories that have been told. So you get the best of both worlds. But anyway. I want to have scary stories, if there's any. <laughs> oh, there's some there ghosts and goblins lurking about on set. <laughs> There's a lot of nice little scary stories, but so, <laughs> so the first person that we have coming on here, who you've been who you've been uh, uh, plugging, 
is the Reverend Schnorr. And uh, he's been a part of the Jerry Springer show. And he's actually married people on the Jerry Springer show. And for those of you who don't remember or want to remember, we're going to play a little clip. How's that, Peter? Yeah, I love it. Let's go. Let's do it. And then we'll bring him on. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's the Reverend Schnorr. Extend the olive branch, you're still a guy in no, my book. No, they're right? not. I'm just trying to extend the one. No, they're not. Hey, Ma, listen up. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself. Listen up. It says right here, and this is going to make you feel so much better. It says, as a partridge that broods does not hatch, so is he who gets riches, but not by right. I want you to think about that. <laughs> and what you're going to see is that. The world's full of riches, and one of them riches is loving your own kid, no matter whether he's a guy or a girl. Or I never said I didn't love him. Mm -hmm. I never said that. You're still calling me a him. I'm a girl. Not. Well, I, let's not take I care of the way you're Did I say that I love my son? He wants to marry him. And if that's not a sin, me. then that's his sin to make. He's and you've not, got your own to worry about. Not, so leave him well. I'm, I'm getting married. They're getting married. Get married. Everyone keep their right stuff now, where it is. So we're going to go get married. Let's Come get married right now. Ready? <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today on this most glorious of days to celebrate the gifts of love and fidelity. It is indeed a special occasion when two souls find each other the way Diamond, who are you? Lino. Hmm? Lino. Lino. This is a special occasion when Lino finds Diamond found each other. When hearts are bonded and lives merge so that the two become one. Eyes meet, hands join, the birds sing, and happiness abounds. For love truly is a gift from God. Please join me now in celebration of all this love. Do you, Diamond, take Lino to be your husband? You promise to love him with all your heart, to care for him in sickness, and to help all the days of your lives. I do. Now, though you both be young and restless, remember you have but one life to live. So keep your passions in check and follow God's guiding light, and love will open up to you another world. Please don't, Diamond. And as the world turns, try to be Diamond. generally hospitable to one another. Don't. And your love will be both bold and beautiful. Don't marry. Hey, lady. Don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woo! Okay, let's bring on Reverend Snor after hey, that. Another day at the office. Let's bring on Reverend Snor. <laughs> hey, hey, God bless. I'm good. Hey, it beats the hot of paternity tests every day, huh? Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> What's up, How are you doing Snor? today? I'm doing good. Thank you. Hey, mine's not as big as yours. I don't know why. Oh, it's yeah, kind of short. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Well, yeah, yeah, I still got the rest of it to do to go. There we go. Cheers. Mm. I honestly thought he was going to pull out a Magnum bottle of red wine. <laughs> I, I, the first thing that crossed my mind just now. What's he drinking? What are you drinking, Rev? I I went with a uh, import. Mm. It's uh, got this at Walmart for four ninety nine. It's a Shiraz, and it's uh, it's nice because if you don't have the key. It just screws right off here. There we go. <laughs> You're good to go. You don't have to worry about tools or nothing. 
Cheers to that. I knew we'd be drinking some bottles soon. Here we go. Woo, Ellen, baby. First time. Oh, Peter like, Peter love. Peter wants more about that bottle. So, <laughs> Reverend, how long were you on the Jerry Springer show? How did this come about? How did this persona evolve? Or where did it come from? Well, I was there walking around, you know, mind my own business. And yep. I, it's hard to find, to be honest, it's hard to find people to do weddings on the Jerry Springer show. Because sometimes... Care. I would have thought that that was very profitable. Hundred bucks, hundred <laughs> bucks a wedding. But this is what they would, if you watch that clip, I'm kind of proud of one thing. Okay, times have changed a lot since then. It wasn't all that long ago, twelve years maybe. Yep. There was only one place in this country where a same-sex couple could get married, and that was in Springerland. And now every fifty state could do it. Mm -hmm. But back then, you had to come on the show to. It wasn't legal or nothing, but you know it was largely ceremonial. But you did it anyway. They did it anyhow because why not? They're going to pay me, and because they support that kind of thing, you know. Exactly. Love is love. Get the government out of it. So, but they had a guy in Milwaukee got stuck in traffic. Okay. He was going coming in to officiate the weddings. He wasn't even a real reverend out there. He was just a wedding officiant at. Uh, but he got stuck in traffic, and the show was ready to go. And they said, hey, Reverend Schnorr, can you step in? Uh -huh. Sure as hell I can. God damn it, let's go. Okay. And I did that for three full seasons, 150 shows, episodes, which is a third of the shows during that time. And if you played just the ones I was in, you'd get a full syndicated season of the Jerry Springer show. Wow. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Now, now, so you were on it for three, four seasons, right? Right. Okay, so how many how many weddings do you think you officiated? Because you only came on for the weddings. Sometimes I would come on to counsel people. Oh, okay. Sometimes people had troubles where they had confessions or they just didn't have much to say and they had to stretch for time, so they threw me out there. Uh, so I'd say out of 150 shows, I probably did 100 some weddings because some shows had multiple weddings. Some shows didn't have any, so I uh, some were reruns or so, yeah, so counseling. Counseling, um, Johnny, I wonder, do I need counseling or does anyone else? I know we have someone else in the uh, in the green room, uh, uh, Stuart. Does Stuart need counseling? Did you just ask me if you need counseling, Peter? Or if I need counseling, did I say you? I, I was wondering if I needed counseling. Well, you need counseling, I do. You think? I mean, you might need a little counseling, actually. Maybe we should start this whole thing off with a prayer, Rev. Can you, yeah, can you start us off with a little prayer before Absolutely. we get, before we're going to get going here? In my experience, if you have to ask if you need counseling, you need counseling. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're right. going to start like we start everything. Here, a, little, a little something from the good book. God. And I don't like that page. Now, on the first day of the week. Very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. It's something I want you guys to think about tonight while you're going to sleep. <laughs> the world is not, it's its a confusing place, especially these days. And sometimes you just need to really consider stuff like that. It brings you some peace and centers you. Okay. That's very, that's, that's very, uh, that's very eye-opening and very liberating rep. So thank the you. Word of the Lord right here. So, I'm yeah. here to help. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Peter, so uh, I, I, I wanted to, <laughs> where do we go with this? So I, I wanted to uh, talk about what Rev's been up to and what's been going on uh, in his was, world. Uh, I was just about to ask, uh, for, before I get into my counseling, because sometimes I think I need it, um, how, how long have you been uh, done with the – are you still on Jerry Springer? Are you still doing it? No, you know what happened is the circus kind of up and left, the way circuses right. tend to do. They packed up the big top and moved to Stanford, Connecticut. Who the hell wants to live there? So I didn't go with them because, you know, it's Stanford, Connecticut. They're still going to pay me 100 bucks, but it costs 120 to live in Stanford, Connecticut. So it was like a pay cut, and I said, the hell with that. I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to formulate my own congregation. There we go. And when I went on the Internet to do that, 
uh, no one showed up. And uh, you, you have your own you have your own show, right? Could you tell us about that? Now I do. Yes. And your brother Carlito helped me out with that because when I'm trying on my own, nobody showed. Uh, but now, once or twice a week, we do our nightly service, and it, we basically we tell you a little bit about what's going on in the world, things that we found interesting during the week, okay. and we, we counsel people sometimes, and we interact with our our uh, congregation that joins along the side here in their comments and stuff, just like you got, and uh, we have a lot of fun, and it's it's been a uh, God send literally for this whole COVID lockdown. I haven't been out of my basement in a long time. Well, probably not as fun as like, you know, interacting with everybody on the Jerry Springer show when you're getting them married or something, right? <laughs> no, that was fun. It could be scary, but it was fun. And I liked, I love getting there. There's always a hot chick somewhere in a place, <laughs> usually in a front row. So, so you're doing a show with Bert, but let's bring Brother Carlito on. Let's let's oh, bring him on too. Yes, let's let's do that. But but before we do, uh, Reverend just mentioned something that uh, uh, they did a show. I think it was yesterday, and I want to just play a short clip of that show, and then I'll bring Brother Carlito on, and maybe you guys can talk about what you guys were really talking about at that clip. So hmm. let's uh, let's bring remember. that clip on and 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 see what that looks like. Uh, this is your clip from the Reverend Schnorr show yesterday. It's a dangerous job. Philippines police chief killed by rooster while breaking up cockfight. <laughs> if you don't think you're having a bad day, when that lady lost her coffee at the bus stop and she went home and read this story that just happened October 28th, this guy's having a bad it's day. Today. Wow. Well, I have made it a hard and fast rule never to get between two cocks. Uh, but you condolences to his family we uh, and friends over there. Hopefully people in the Philippines don't watch this show. I'm guessing they don't. But you know what? Yeah. A metal blade. He was the damn rooster was armed with a metal blade, and while he attempted to break up an illegal cockfight, he was killed. See, and that's why those things should be legalized. You have a, an official referee with rules. Okay. You you do all your betting on DraftKings, so you don't have to go down to you know in the bad neighborhoods or nothing, in the back garages and stuff, and and legalize the cockfights. Us poor people got to make our money somehow. Okay, and this is one way to do it. We don't want to fight dogs because those are a lot more expensive to raise. So you let people have their cockfights. Better this than breaking into your garage or your house. Throw some money, DraftKings it. Get you could do pay per views, and that's how you get the get the real money in there. And some of these, uh, there'd be a lot of you know people could raise champion cockfighters the way they raise thoroughbreds. And I think it would be a brilliant thing, especially after we did that story, I Googled <laughs> championship Cox. I mean, that was a big mistake. Here's what I want to know. <laughs> that was a part of the show that was from yesterday that you guys did. And uh, breaking news, go ahead. breaking news. Go ahead. Well, I mean, we searched the internet high and low and only two things are trending. One's red, one's blue. So we want to go off the table, the beaten path. You know, some people go blue, some people go red. The Rev and I, I'm look purple. On the dirt path. Oh, hey, hey, welcome, brother Carlito. What are you drinking today? Hey, brother Carlito, how you doing? Hey, Peter. <laughs> West Coast in the house, <laughs> or I should say, Midwest in the house. Oh, well, well, baby, I love, I love it. Don't let the Rev fool you. I did hear it was a four dollar bottle of wine. We're not too highlight on the Rev show. We stick to some hillbilly water right here. There we go. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> Straight okay. out of a Missouri urinal. How is the show going, Brother Carlito? You know, it's going great. Yeah. Started kind of during COVID. I mean, yeah. I think our first show was Palm Sunday. We didn't know how wow. it was going to go. Honest to God, we called each other up. We said, uh, I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? Go ahead. 
Well, I was going to ask, I mean, like this is probably on everybody's mind. It's on my mind. It's on Johnny's mind. It's probably on Stuart's mind over there in the green room. But uh, I'm wondering, did they Stuart's capture coming out, Stuart's the coming out cock? Out, he has a lot of questions no. for Rev Schnorr, so yeah. Did they capture the cock? No, the cock's on the loose. Uh, it hasn't been caught. Uh, we may have, have an update in our next show. Um, so there's a murder on the loose, and there's a reward $30? for it. It's kind of like a Saturday night in Montana. There's a cock on the lamb. Okay, so and it's a million dollar. Uh, it's a million dollars to capture that cock. I guess so, but I mean, okay. we think we have problems. I mean, I don't have any problems. I need to go and uh, make a million dollars. <laughs> hey, what? That's a new reality show right there. Cock hunters. Cock hunters. We're, yes, we're absolutely. going over to Philippines. I'll, I'll that shit. We're going to the Philippines, me and you, and we're going to hunt this rooster down. Yes, and right. we'll we'll hang, we'll cuff it with little tiny cuffs. Yes, we'll bring it in. I mean, does it have to be? Alive. Does it have to be alive? Can we bring it in dead, dead or alive? Right, you're coming with me, huh? We have dead some great, uh, great. Uh, what do they call them? Chicken wings. Chicken wings. Yeah. There you go. Buffalo, buffalo wild wings. Chicken wings. Johnny's got the uh, a cayenne a cayenne pepper we could put on right for the seasoning. Right here. So, so this, so, so these are the things that you guys are, are have been talking about on the show. Well, yeah, uh, and there's one see, different cocks any cock will do. Cock will do. Cock will do. Cock will do. Yeah. Now enough of that. Important things. But well, let's, Peter, let's, you want to help out the rev here? Let's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's right. let's move on to let's, some more serious topics. Yeah, we're gonna stop dicking around. All right. So, on the show, we like to engage with our guests like you do. Yes. We have tons of viewer mail. See the Rev, the Rev's fan base, uh, they're not too high tech. And I have watched your show on Periscope, Rev. We got to get to this Periscope thing. You just don't see the moon through Periscope, just so you know. Um, but uh, viewers send in mail, all right, and they want help. It's kind of like a Dear Abby column, all right. Oh. We didn't get to this letter yesterday, and she just emailed again today. So uh, it was one of our scary letters that our viewers need help. Peter, I want your take. Reverend, obviously, she's looking for your take. Johnny. You'll just listen like me. Here we go. Bring it in. I'm, I'm, I'm going to write some notes. <clears throat> okay, here Let's we go. go. I'm getting old here, so let me put my readers on. It okay. starts off like always. Dear Rev, I just moved into an apartment building in Logan Square. That's in Chicago for everybody who doesn't know. <laughs> I moved in the apartment just about a month ago. The first night I was here was fine. The second night, I started hearing strange noises. There are wood floors in here, and they're old and they're creaky. I heard footsteps, and it sounded just like someone was in the front. But when I got up, turned on the lights, the place was empty. On the way back, walking back to my room, I felt a little chill, as if I just walked past an air conditioner. But I don't have air conditioning. Then one night following, I felt someone sit on my bed. I could feel them breathe on me. My whole body tingled. It was as if a lover had mounted me, but the frigid cold was inside of me instead of warm. I turned on the lamp and there was no one there, but I could still feel him. Long story short, it was the best sex of my life. I desperately want the spirit to take me again, but he hasn't been back. What should I do? Signed, Erection Mary? <laughs> Erection, Mary. <laughs> she sounds like a fool for a ghoul. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, boy. Okay. I'll let you go first, Peter. What kind of advice do you got for Erection, Mary? And talk slow because I write slow. Okay. Dictation time. Get ready. Get set. First of all, you got to ask her what day it was, like what the date was, all right? Because the ghost might come back, all right? And they got to stay where they're at, okay? Don't leave. Because eventually this said ghost is going to come back. And, it, and probably on that day, too. So if you want the best ever, it's worth it. So every night following, <laughs> take night to read. <laughs> <laughs> He's going back to read. He, he sounds like uh, Joe Knows. Joe Knows. 
<laughs> yeah, which we'll get we'll, which we'll get to in a little while because we got to ask Rev about about Joe knows. But go ahead, Let, let's finish this up because we do have some more people in the green room that I want to bring in. Go ahead. So Peter, that rounds up your um, uh, take on yeah. it. Okay, stay, Rev, stay, stay. It's it's very good advice, but here's what you really need to know, Mary. What you need is a sexorcism. Fortunately, I perform those for a small fee. You need to email me your address, your phone number, and your Venmo name, and we can figure out a way that I can come over to your house and sexercise you. And we'll get rid of we'll get rid of uh, all the problems that you're having, and uh, he'll get you back into the night of the living living instead of the living dead. Okay. All right. Sexorcism is uh, is is your solution. Gotcha. All hey, right. Peter, that's about how our show goes. Cockfights and sexorcisms. Well, cheers to that, guys. That's very nice. nice. That's very nice. Hey, we were ghetto and ghetto wasn't cool. All right. So after the sexorcism, let's bring on Stuart and let's see uh let's see what she says about this whole uh this whole shebang. Yes, let's do it. Hi Stuart, hey. how you doing? Hey. Oh, so everyone's drinking red wine everyone's tonight. Red wine, well, it's the blood of Christ. Reverend. More or less. Not well, everybody. This is the 499 blood of Christ. There we go. I love that. Okay. Stuart, is a, um, you're a comedian in New York, right? Yes, and I already have advice for Mary. Oh, wait. Hang on. Hang on. Ooh. Hang on. Pen and paper. Ooh. Brother Carlito, pen and paper. Go for it. I have great advice for Mary. So oh. everyone knows... When you want to get over someone, you have to get under someone. Slow down. So I, 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 I very clear right. oh. to me that Mary has to fuck a different ghost. Mary. Write that down. Needs to fuck a different ghost. He's taking that literally, but you can keep going. It's okay. I love it. I just make making sure he wrote it down. You know, it's a it's not capital a F. Yeah. So she needs to get, you know, the Ouija board, the wine, light a candle. I know what candle she could use. A PMAM. This one right here. There we go. That one. <laughs> go to peterific-merch.com and get a PM by PM. PM. You know, the PM one really brings the ghosts in. It. Does. So that's the better one. Oh, yeah. So she needs to light some candles, get a Ouija board, drink some wine, and literally lay in bed until she gets fucked by a different ghost. <laughs> <laughs> You're Not welcome. for nothing for Peter and Rev. I'm sending her I'm sending her comment to the poor lady. Yeah, I think she wins. I think you, I think you do win. Yes. Well, she intuition, like you know, you know, when you have ghost problems. <laughs> Hey, so before we get to uh, talking about to, to Rev that you want to talk about, Peter, why don't you tell us who we're, we're talking to here? And Stuart, give us a little background on who you are. Well, uh, Jono actually told me to bring her on because uh, she, he was not available today. And uh, oh, no, you know Jono? I know Jono. I used to bartend with him. Did you really? Come on. Yes. And so what, what, what have you, like, you know, you, you play at different uh, clubs over there in New York? Yeah, yeah. Well, comedy uh -huh. is in my head, no matter what Jerry Seinfeld says. Everyone's doing outdoor shows now and Zoom shows. But it's actually okay. been really fun. Yeah, and everyone comes out. It's super fun. What 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 uh what what's your website? Do you do you have, like, a special mm -hmm. website or do you, do you send it out to yeah. Uh, anybody? Yeah, yeah what is I have it? a website, uh, www.stuartfullerton.com. Okay. And I also have an Instagram, which is at Stuart and Chill. And I have a podcast called Staying Humble with Stu, if anyone wants to listen to that. Oh, I would love to come on your podcast. But before we even get to that, Peter, uh, how, do, how do they connect to like see a live Zoom uh, show? I post everything on my Instagram and there's always everything's on that. Okay, know? cool. Awesome. Yeah. Johnny had a questione, but he left real quick. Johnny okay. left. Yes, yeah, so I, I used to work with Joe No. Okay, awesome. So what can, what what would you say your comedy is? I would say that I'm very dry and slightly rude, um, and I make fun I can of. I tell you slightly rude, and I can tell you very dry. But I uh, have you ever? Yeah, you've you've of course watched Jerry Springer, right? 
You know what's crazy? I totally have. When I was That's really crazy. little, I wasn't allowed to watch TV, but I was a latchkey kid. You know, when like your parents would give you like the key and you just get yeah. off the bus and go home. And there was one TV in my house and it was upstairs and I would sneak in and I would make sure I knew exactly how the remote was sitting and what channel the TV was on. And I would watch Jerry Springer like every day in fifth grade. Oh, wow. School. So you so you know who the Reverend Schnorr is? I do. Oh, there we go. Okay. Do you have any questions right now for the Reverend? I want to, I, I'm, I'm very curious. I have one question for the Reverend. Oh, what is let's bring him in then. Let's bring, bring in the Reverend. Let's go. What, what is your question for the Rev? Reverend, I have a question. Have you ever thought about starting a cult? <laughs> it's funny you should mention that. Your hair is like have... perfect, uh, awful for cult followings in a good way. I've thought about it because a lot of people have had a lot of crazy success with cults. Yeah, it's very, very lucrative business. It's a lot of work up front, but afterwards, pretty much everybody else does the hard labor. Yeah. Which I like. I, I'm a yeah. fan of that. And I, you know, what every cult starter needs is a pretty woman to help him start the cult. I'm your so, girl. Are you available for so cult available. starting? I think we need to get a small town upstate New York and just go for it, Reverend. I'm on board. I got a big circus tent that we can use to start with revivals and stuff. Yes, yes. And I'm open to any ideas you might have for how we could start getting people to, you know, give over their lives and money to us. Their money. Yeah, seriously. I think it's a great idea for us to go ahead and get that started. We can maybe meet after this. This is what we do on Social Happy Hour with Peter. We talk about, we drink, we, we have a good time, we, we talk about a party cult, you know. <laughs> we, we talk about ghost sex. Yeah, it's all good. We connect. That's what we do. I yes, guess. we do. Here's to well, that. Ooh, actually, I need a little bit more Jesus juice. When every other media s circus is dividing people, you're bringing people together. And Absolutely. that's what I love about this show. Boom, baby. I love it. And I love everyone on this show because they're awesome. Mm. God bless to that. Okay. God bless to that. So, God bless. God bless. Yes, absolutely. Mm. God bless. So, um, Reverend, has there ever, now, since we're in the spirit of Halloween, has there ever been like a ghost story within the studios that you shoot oh. Jerry Springer? Has anyone ever had like a um, – existential crisis on that show like you know like uh exorcism so so to say almost every day oh almost but every day existential crisis almost every day but the the extra spiritual stuff only happened a couple of times the ethereal stuff yes yeah i got to you know you put the little flashlight under <laughs> hang on <laughs> Are we really doing this show? Yes, Let me are. tell you about Grandma Rap. What are we really doing? Okay, what is the wait, wait, Grandma Rapper? Keep going. Grandma Rap. Grandma Rap. Okay. Grandma Rap uh okay. came out. She was an elderly lady. I assume she's gone by now because she was almost gone by then. And she uh she came out and she rapped. <laughs> but while she was rapping, unbeknownst to her, honest to God, is a true story. Ask Jenny. Uh, Johnny, your friend. You, you, Grand, you, you, grandma Rap dropped a deuce on the stage in front of the entire live audience. Grandma Rap did not know she dropped a deuce in front of everybody. She finished her rap. Jerry rapped, went to break. Grandma Rap was extort, ex escorted off the stage, and the stage hands had to come in. And clean up after Grandma Rap like they did when the horse got married. If you go into that studio today, I talked to some people who still work over there. On certain nights when the moon is right, you can still smell Grandma Rap. And it's, it's, uh, it's ethereal. But she wasn't there very long. 
but you left a deep impression. <laughs> did she really? She left a little deep impression. Honestly, God, she left behind more than most guests did. Let me hey, get I to it. You it. missed I that episode? It probably still haunts that I'm studio. I'm tears my eyes. <sighs> so, uh, Rev, I have one more clip that I actually want to show of you. And then, Stuart, I have uh, something I want to show of you with Joe Knows. And uh, we can talk about that. But I'm going to put I'm going to put, put Rev on first, and we can take a look at his book, and then come back. And uh, yep, here we go. <laughs> Minute seventeen. Go. Hi. What was your name? Kelly. Yeah, uh, Kelly. <laughs> This is indeed a special occasion with two of souls <laughs> coming together. You're not. Uh oh. Me. Don't touch the. Listen. Okay, that's self-explanatory right there, Rev. <laughs> Later, I asked her if when she wore that shirt and she stood on a street corner of dogs trying to pee on her. Now, oh, I want to interject here. My, my scariest moment ever on the show was that show. Do you want to know why? We almost lost the Rev that day. Oh, really? What, what, what you didn't see is she actually grabbed his hair and his head banged off the chair and almost knocked him out. She was much faster than she looked. If you don't, you didn't hear it. He comes off stage and he has a apple on the side of his head. And we're like, what happened to you? He's like, I, she banged my head off the chair. So we took the cameras back in the editing and we isolated his mic. And sure enough, you hear boom. And it's his head hitting the folding chair. And he had a black and blue mark on the side of his head the whole rest of the week. Well, no, he she, shouldn't, you know, in, in her defense, he shouldn't have talked about the buffet. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah that, that was not without story. offering her di actual directions of where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, you have a fan there. Uh, is it Lynette? She would like Lynette, to know. Yes, I love Lynette. She, she wants to know how she could get her jerry beads. Well, if you come on the oh, Red yeah. Store show. I got some jerry beads for you, Lynette. I will send them to you ASAP, baby. <laughs> there you go. All right. There got you, you go. covered. Oh yeah, I got I got two of them for you, Lynette. I'll send them both to you. All right. Um, so, uh, Lynette, we have Jerry Beats for you, no problem. Yeah. What's weird about that clip is I read somewhere that Leonardo DiCaprio hates watching himself on TV. Yeah. And I could see that because I don't watch Leonardo DiCaprio on TV either, but I like watching. Me. That was pretty, kind of pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Yes, exactly. I you know, I the you know to the day. Do you know to the day that. God rest his soul, Rodney. Right, Rev? Tell him the story about Rodney. Oh, yeah, Rodney Dangerfield. I got a picture with him. Anyhow, he <laughs> he uh, he came on the show when he was doing Meet Wally Sparks, and uh, he said he was the nicest guy, very funny. Uh, his comedy, while not very cerebral, was a little bit above our audience's head. But uh, he, when he was sick and, and dying, 
he was such a big fan. They sent him videotapes to watch in his hospital room uh, uh, until he passed away. It was a nice thing. Hmm. Yeah, I, I will say something in her defense, okay? And Nelson Toe did um, did bring this point up. I'd be mad too if I didn't know where the buffet was because I'm a heavy eater, and uh, after this show, I'm gonna be chowing down on a lot of steak. But you know, that's neither here nor there. I'd be mad too if I didn't know where the buffet was. I'm just saying. Yeah, the mean oh, thing, and I, I'll admit, I was kind I'm of an asshole. Know what he's talking about? There was no buffet. No, it was, was probably How really. How was there no buffet on the Jerry Springer show? We did. Well, 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 we used to have a. A, we used to have a live buffet where where we would have a, a we would have somebody on a table. I'm gonna say it's politically correct, and then we had chefs come and design the buffet around the person, and it was a live buffet. We would do that for pay per views, what? covering up to all the parts you're not supposed to see with, with like with, with sushi with and bologna. Yeah, I would not eat that. I'm sorry. I would not eat it. However, however, there were no cameras around. Never. Anyway. No. Never cameras we, around. Okay, no. there we go. <laughs> Martyr Man and I, because I tried it. Stuart, what, what were you going to say? Um, I forget. Something about the buffet. What was I? I think he answered it with the buffet. Oh, I said craft services. No craft services to give the lady? <laughs> craft <laughs> services was like a paste and popsicle sticks. At the Jerry Springer show. Wow. Was it astronaut paste? All right. The scary thing is most of the people who work there like to eat paste, so it kind of worked out. <laughs> Johnny, you didn't tell me you like to eat paste. Uh, well, I, I, you know, he's not talking about me. Well, he uh, worked no. there, so what the hell? <laughs> yeah, Honestly, yeah. God, NBC Universal didn't give us any food ever. There was no – Jenny Jones would leave – Oh, and they have leftover craft services, and that's the closest thing we got to. And now a word from our sponsor. Oh God! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I? I'm sorry. NBC Universal used to throw us the greatest rap parties and Christmas parties ever. They're a wonderful group, but as far as craft services goes, we got Jenny Jones leftovers. I'll you know they were they were looking I'll out for us. Way. I'm not that political. I'm not. I'm uh, not going to get into that. Oh, I'm not going to be political. We can't get into that. Never mind. Anyway, I was going to say something, and I'm not going to say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't, don't say, say it. it. Don't say it. I don't want. Vanderpump, I don't want to put down the network. Vanderpump, Vanderpump Rules is an NBC Bravo ah, show. So I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Hey, like, dude, you're insulting my parent company. I'm sorry. <laughs> they gave me all the cigarettes I could smoke. So, <laughs> honestly, God, it was actually great to work there. Okay, good, awesome. That's so what I like to hear. Well, he's lying, and and so or you know I'd be lying too, uh, but because I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to say it. But here's the thing. Uh, it's been awesome for me, guys. Yeah, sorry, Peter. So okay. I the, didn't know Peter. I'm sorry. Here's I was kidding. And we're still we lying. had the best bread in the business. Here's the thing, Stuart. Yeah. Uh, you know, Joe knows. Yes. Look at look at Rev. How do you know Joe? Like you just do shows with him or what? Well, we bartended together. Okay, and that's through it. Com through comedy too. He's very. He's a character. He's a character. I like that. All right. So so so. I, I don't know what you guys are about to show. I'm so nervous. I no. I I just have a couple clips on Ooh. our our talk with Joe the other the other day. I have a talk um, and I have a couple different clips and I just want to talk about what we were talking about and I want to make sure and see if it makes sense. And I want to bring the Rev in and, and see if the Rev, if it makes sense to the Rev as well. So anyway, uh, here's a clip from Joe that uh, we love. And she says, she says, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got every outfit. I'm like, good, cool. All right. So, uh, I say, uh, all right. Uh, I tell her these things while we're at brunch the day of, uh, so she can prepare. And then, uh, I say, okay, I gotta go. I got some errands to run. Uh, but I'll see you later. Uh, just be prepared by like seven o'clock. Right. Uh huh. And, uh, she says, okay, cool. 
Uh, just text me if you if you're running late. Just uh, let me know. I can accommodate, but uh, just communicate with me. I'll see you later. So I leave, uh, and then uh... okay. First of all, number one, before we get into anything, <clears throat> how much freaking alcohol have I drank on this show? I'm like. <laughs> Right now, I'm guzzling a bottle of wine. That episode of what I was guzzling a bottle of tequila. Like, how much alcohol am I drinking on this? <laughs> oh, God. It's exhausting being fun. But no, Joe is telling me things. So you got to learn how to think. I was drinking like crazy the other night. So, so now, now it's your turn. So, perfect. But, but listen, here's it. Oh, there goes Peter. Okay. Uh oh! Oh God! Wow, so Rev, you got competition. Okay. I need this. I need this to get through this, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll help. I'll help. I'll help push this along. So that was Joe talking about his epic date, and here's a second part of him talking did about. Did you epic date. Uh, Yes. <laughs> I did some research about some of the restaurants that were around the area, and I found that there was like this. Uh, Michelin star restaurant just a couple blocks away and I called them and they're like I was like hey okay if I order some food how long is it going to take for it to get here okay uh, so Stuart <laughs> okay before we get to the brother and the reverend did you know any about any of this by Joe no no but why Okay, what's happening, first of all? So he's making her pick out an outfit, and then they're okay, going no, 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 to no, start, but no. he wants it to go? What he was doing, what he was doing, what he was doing was he was uh, taking this girl out on a date. Okay. And, yes, hold on. I think I know. <laughs> he rented a hotel, and it was a very long hotel, apparently. We have three more clips. Okay. <laughs> he rented a hotel. It's a very long hotel. And he set up different like stations, you know, like okay. stations of the cross, but only stations of like a restaurant and a nightclub and something else because it was in the middle of COVID. And um, yeah, he wanted to give her the full experience of like a night out. All right. I'm okay. I'm, I, I'm, I'm wondering why he didn't include dinner in a movie, you know, but I don't know yeah. if he included that. But yeah, she had to change different outfits to go to different themes in that one little area oh okay okay can you tell you about this at all no can we show the next uh clip yes we can let's go perfect and then i start moving all the furniture out of the living room because i need this to be an open space i need to set up the scene right yeah. It's gonna be a restaurant. There's like okay. there's a couch and there's hey, tables Joe. and all that shit. Joe, yeah. how much did this cost? Like, what was the cost? On Don't the ask day? me that. Did Don't this... ask me that. Hey, okay, I, I want to ask you that. All right. At that, at that like time, notes right now. I'm well, I was, dad, I'm picking notes. I was on like, a, <laughs> I was on unemployment at that time, uh, thankfully, and so like that wasn't an issue. It cost me a lot more than I would uh, I should Anticipate. have been able to spend. But I was like, fuck it. <laughs> okay, I want to I want to hear Stuart and Reverend Char on this. On this. Yeah, give me uh, you guys give me your opinion on this whole date thing. Like yeah. Reverend, what do you think? Did he go overboard, underboard, a little much, a little not enough? Like, what do you think? Or do you want to hear more? Whatever. <laughs> Both of you. What do you think? I'm curious. So far in this story, I want Stuart. Stuart, go ahead. I have worked with Joe. <laughs> okay. You've read it multiple times. I don't know that his bank account was ready for this day, which is why I love that Peter called him out. I'm curious if he got a little hookup, a little con, con, con deal <laughs> with said hotel. Um, this is a lot. So what were the stations? Nightclub, dinner... And then there, was, there was a nightclub dinner and something else. I can't remember the third station. As a woman, if you're making me change on a date, I'm not on The Bachelor, okay? I don't need to be getting in and out of jumpsuits, in and out of dresses, going back and forth. No, it's too much. It's too, it's much, too much. much. 
Reverend Joe, I agree. What do you think? I agree. I have never worked with Joe, but I have been on unemployment. And <laughs> that so you is definitely true. have worked with Joe. I well, I've never worked with him, but I have been on unemployment, and uh, it's too much. Okay, now you don't want her to know you're on unemployment, but you don't want to get her hopes up to expect that kind of thing every right. weekend. Okay, before, right? before anything else, Reverend Stewart, after like changing and doing all these stations of the cross, would you sleep with said person after? No. Okay. No. Reverend. Wait, but maybe that's Stewart. the final stage, and then he like. You know, I like his statement. He said, fortunately, I was on unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Brother Carlito, Reverend Schnorr, back to you guys. Would you put together something like this? Well, first of all, since Stuart just said Lord, no. Brother, no. Yeah, Reverend, yes. <laughs> Since Stuart just said no, then no. Reverend, uh, you know good and well what you need to do with the cult. Let's okay. just say. Okay, so okay, here's the thing. I got two more things to show. Is it still about the his date? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that, yeah, my my buddy Joe now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. I got two more things to show, and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be beautiful, and I'm gonna show you right now. Like on your way over where? And she's like, I'm going over to your place. I'm like, I'm not at my place. And she's like, Uh, where are where are you? I'm like, uh, I I'm not gonna I'm not about to tell her that I'm at a hotel, but I say, uh, hey, why don't you get out of the car you're in right now and uh -huh. get into this car? I tell her to get into another so you had a car waiting for her. Uh, yeah. Well, when uh -huh. she told me she was already in a car getting to my place, I said, no, get out of that car. Go into Manhattan now. Uh, and so she has no idea where she's going. She's okay. And then so she uh, when I know that she's in that car, that's when I order the food. And then uh, it arrives uh, just in time. I take the food upstairs and I start plating everything. I also chose this hotel because they have uh, plateware. They have glassware. Like they have everything I need to be able to serve a nice dinner. <laughs> I know. Right, about, right about when he said get out of the car you're in and get into another car i would have been like i'm good thank god he wasn't taking her to an island exactly. exactly i was gonna say i don't know what women want but i do know that telling them to get out of that car and into this panel van is not the way to put them at ease and feel good on a date are you, you know saying what? it doesn't set the mood Oh, I've tried it. Trust me, it doesn't work. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, he makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I have to say one thing. I think that girl who wants to fuck the ghost needs to take the ghost on an epic date like this. <laughs> That's perfect. Tell the ghost to get oh, out of that get Uber. Out of the car, and, and, get Michelin star food. Make him change outfits and just go for it. Well, here's a question for you guys. And, and you <laughs> brought this up earlier a couple of minutes ago. How much How much do you think this date cost? Oh. Michelin star. Shit. So I, I, I was a little confused on the one clip. Did he bring the food to one of the hotel rooms, how he had the different stages of the hotel rooms. It was delivered along with alcohol. So you're renting out a hotel, you bring right, right, right. alcohol. Okay. How much did it cost? I, Stuart, you said, okay, yeah, you threw out an interesting point. So go for it. I think I'm going to go a thousand with the nice hotel room being probably COVID time ah. 300. Oh, you think less? You think more? Oh, God. Yeah. So, but, but continue. A thousand? A grand? Oh, come on. Uh, wait, real quick. Where does he live? State wise, New York. New York. <laughs> New York, which is important because like an Uber <laughs> that just went up. <laughs> multiple Ubers would have been like a hundred. Multiple Michelin dinner would have been three, four hundred, right? If he got like a ton of 
stuff, hotel room. Okay, I'm going 1500 actually, y'all. You know, I feel like I'm in the prices right. I'm going to go 1501. 1501. 1502. Is that what? Sure. What do you think? Well, if we're doing prices right, I'm going $99 just to even things out. But I, first of all, I never understood why a tire company rates restaurants. I've never been to the Goodyear four star, but I've been to the Michelin three star. I know it's an easy joke. It was stupid. Stuart, you strike That's me as a great diner. Like a good beer, a, a good burger and fries, and a nice ice cold beer. There you go. Yeah, there's nothing better. That's good old American. That's what I'm, I mean. I'm saying three grand tops. I'm thinking three. He spent about three G's on this whole thing, three racks, whatever you want to call it. You got to rent the room. It's got to be a nice room. Maybe the Plaza Hotel. You got to deliver. You got to deliver a meal for two. Then you got to deliver alcohol because he's bartending. So you got to deliver something that looks like my little empire. You know what? You, know what? you got a point there. You just can't order one glass. So you're ordering yeah. bottles. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I didn't we're think looking at three it. G's right now, at least. Yeah, because you don't know what she drinks or what she eats. So you got to have an assortment. Now, right? was this a first date? I, I was just going to say that. Did he at least score a second date or was this a one and done? I can't remember if it was a first date or a second date, but it was like, because you know, we were talking about dating during COVID. I think it was the topic of the day. I can't remember, but my, but you know, this just happened to come out of his mouth. You know, he just started giving us this whole thing, you know, like dating during COVID. You know, the, actually, I think, was that the topic, Johnny was dating during COVID and how we couldn't go to a nightclub or a restaurant and we had to like recreate it, something like that. I don't even remember what this topic was, honestly. Well, he's, he said in the clip that she couldn't go to a oh. nightclub because of COVID. Yeah. So, so he, said a lot of, he said a lot of different things. And he said <laughs> one more thing that I'm going to put on. Uh, Let's go with this one. Too, and then, uh, yeah. Okay. You, you seem a little familiar to me. It, what Peter was just saying, what do you do? Because you look a little familiar. Familiar? Why is that? Yeah. Who? Wait, who do I look like? Familiar. Oh, yeah. You look I, familiar. Have you uh, been on any TV shows? Uh, I was on uh, Conan O'Brien for half a second in the audience. That, uh, okay. As an audience member. I was on uh, American Idol for half a second as an audience member. That wasn't uh, I was on the Colbert Report for half a second as an audience member, uh, and uh, <laughs> The View for half a second as an audience member. But at The View, I uh, proposed to Whoopi Goldberg, and she said no. <laughs> she said no because he creeped her out with two Ubers in a hotel room. Yep. <laughs> it was Whoopi. It was Whoopi. I think it was Lynette. She said no second date. I guess. Sorry. <laughs> I got. I got. I got to tell you guys. At the end of the day, uh, he is our sidekick going forward on everything that we do. He's amazing. I want to meet him. Yeah. He's gonna be sending us some clips, and they're gonna be amazing. Yeah, he's gonna send us some stuff. That's that's amazing. Stuart. Yes, sir. How, uh, so. <laughs> Your relationship with uh, Joe Dodge is purely professional, so, right? Long story short, like you're not the girl he, he did, an Uber, right? and then he asked me to get out of the Uber, <laughs> and then I went to a hotel room and I changed forty-seven times, <laughs> and I ate Michelin star food that was to go? Question mark. <laughs> Drink bottles and bottles of alcohol. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> Do you, do you, do you, since you were the girl of the date, did you figure out how much you probably spent on this date? I think whatever, um, I think it would be, well, the alcohol adds the, now that you mentioned like the collection of alcohol, which I saw with my own two eyes. I don't think he went to Walmart either. <laughs> I'm thinking upwards of 2000. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! The light shines on you. <laughs> wow! I didn't know that we had Joe's uh, date over here, guys. That's amazing. 
right, before but before we end all of this, I just want to give everybody uh, a fair and say, Stuart, tell us where we can find you and, and what we need to know about you. Absolutely. So you have to know that I did not go on that date with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> there you did. Don't because lie. Don't I got up out of the car and said, I'm not changing 40 times. Um, also, I've been having a great time in COVID. I don't know this girl that he's dating, but she can. there are people out there hanging that she can hang with. Um, I would also say that I am on Instagram as at Stuart and Chill. I am on Twitter as the same. And I have a podcast called Stay and Humble with Stu on Apple Podcasts, which, Peter, you have to come on. I definitely want to. I'll take you up on that. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Oh, I, chat, I chat with everybody while I, I'm doing this. I love it. I love it. And I, ooh, I wanted to say one more thing. I am just feeling the Lord's spirit tonight because oh, the Thank reverend, you. the reverend in his Bible verse talked about bringing spices. Bringing what? Did. Spices. Yes. Oh, spices. He said bring spices and. Johnny, you are straight up putting cayenne pepper in your cocktail, which I've never seen before. I hope Joe No had that in the room with his bar, with his full bar. Oh yeah. Oh, Johnny doing the Lord's work over here while I'm drinking Jesus juice. There we go. I was just gonna say that there's a lot of you know spice in Jesus imagery happening. I love it. <laughs> well, listen, it was great to have you on. Thank, Thank you all. So much. Thank you, Stuart. And, uh, yeah, Peter, any last words? No, I think you're great. Uh, I hope to have you on again. Actually, I got your number, so let's 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 do this again. It's a we'll lot of fun. Have. We'll network. There we go. Love Cheers, it. Y'all. People call your people. Cheers. <laughs> oh. Have a good night. Good Thanks night. for being a part of it. <laughs> Woo! That I, was I, a very I, saucy um, episode. There it was. I, I think we should really quickly say goodbye to the Rev and Brother Carlito real fast, oh, and, then, and then you and I, you can, you and I can talk right after that. I just followed her on Instagram. You know what? I haven't done that yet, but I will eventually. I kept putting in Stuart and the letter N in chill, but it's not. Okay, hold on, hold on. I need to figure this out. What is it again? Yeah, you hold on. It is. Oh shoot! How do I? Hang on, hang on. Hey, while you guys are looking at that, Reverend, yes, uh, can you tell me what you think about this right now? Okay. Well, the sign says that it's four quarters for an hour, but a quarter only gets you 15 minutes. Yeah. So if my math is correct, that's not an hour. That's not an hour, not an but hour. it is. <laughs> and this is where public school gets you. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think well, we need to devote more than four quarters an hour to public schooling. Uh, I only, but one quarter doesn't get you an hour. And if my math is correct, how about this one? How about this one? Here's some other great town names. Lititz. Oh, it's Lititz. Lititz. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I actually, I would say, God I would bless our WGN people. I would say with tits too, because I always need those tits in my face. <laughs> exactly. Well, when I was a kid, I'm not for that. When I was a kid, we'd drive up. No, I want some titties in my face tonight. Ma would drive us kids up to uh, Wakanda. We'd go, we put the cousins in the trunk so we didn't have to pay for them. But we drive up to Wakanda, up twelve from the city, and there was a restaurant called. Le Tits of Paris. Le Tits of Paris. I swear my mind hit the gas every time we come close to that. Well, you know, I always hear we jump up. Face. Hey, just I so mean, everybody I knows. Face, I want to know where this town is. Hey, guys, just so everybody knows, we're still alive. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. They are La Tits of no, I want some titties in my face tonight. <laughs> I was actually watching WGN this morning, and they were making fun of her for that. <laughs> Honestly, God, they That's did. the only station he gets on his rabbit ears. <laughs> you know what? <clears throat> okay, guys, this is the end of the Peter Magical show. 
and uh, we will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for being with us, and I will talk to you guys later. Namaste.